on November 14th of 2021, I tweeted out, I've been blessed to be a part of five trips to the Super Bowl and three Super Bowl victories. However, 40 years ago today was the most special and inspirational championship of my life. An undefeated season with 32 friends and a special group of coaches. Do you remember the game you were most upset with us? Well, first of all, it's always very hard to please. <laughs> you think? Which I reminded you on Mondays. Remember you added hills for penalties. I don't recollect that, Scott. You got some memories there, right? You're kidding, I hope. You sure you didn't dream that? <laughs> you better be kidding. The yeah. year before, the coaches had found this camp in the summer, but in order for us to go to this camp in the summer, we had to do fundraising with our touchdown club. The touchdown club had just been formed. We were doing bake sales, we were doing car washes, we were doing, there's this stuff called Drix. Drix was a multi-purpose cleaner. And you could use Drix to wash anything. You could wash your dog, you could wash your car, you could wash your windows. You could wash anything with Drix. And we went house to house. That was part of the 81 season too. You know, the year before, that group of seniors kind of refused to do it because, you know, they were, they were too cool for it. And then we were like, we worked like beavers out there, man. And we were selling drinks to anyone that would take it or get it. And we raised money to go to camp. How does that lead to a championship? How are they possibly connected? Selling drinks has everything to do with winning a championship. Everything. Because that was the whole mentality. Doing whatever you had to do for the greater good. Guys, right now we can only afford to send 24 guys. We're a team. Everyone's gonna sell this stuff. If you don't wanna go out and sell this stuff, don't even try out. I played hard, but I didn't like conditioning. And it was my one shortcoming. I was not a good second half player. So it was preseason of my junior year. I was making a lot of plays, but I was leaving plays out there. And after that first scrimmage, Coach Green is addressing us, the whole team. It's kind of like, well, 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 you're hearing it, and I'm kind of looking down, writing notes, and and you, Scott Pioli, you, you selfish son, son of a, a you're last in conditioning, you're last in every hill. I'm tired of you being the clown. I don't care how many times you lead the team in tackles, you will not get on the field if you don't get in better shape. It's not one it. of your strengths. Do you even remember that? I mean, see, I have this vision. Do you even remember that? Uh, you really thought your didn't stink. Yeah. You were talking to your teammates about how great you were. And I just wanted to remind you that that's in the past. We didn't have a starting team. You had to earn your starting spot every week. Every week. Every week. Young Scott Pioli took pride in being a clown, the kind that cuts class to sneak into other people's yearbook photos. So he did what clowns do with feedback they don't like. He made light of it, drawing coach Frank Green into a character named Tank Green. I was pissed off at you, and I assumed that my brother's teammates would all, ah, oh, that's all right, yeah, Coach Green's a jerk. Not one person helped me in that moment. Where I was thinking I was gonna get, oh, it's okay, Scott. Sugar Bear, who I was like this with, gave me this stare. And Dan Rodstrom, you know, who ended up going to West Point. Danny was already a West Point guy. He, he had, and he wore me out. And he was like, Coach Green talked bad about one guy today. And it's you, we need you. And it was that whole thing where, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't mature. And again, 1981, 2001, Mike Vrabel's holding people accountable. Mike Vrabel's Dan Rodstrom. So from that moment on, I started to change things. You know, my friends still clown me to this day. Oh, Scott Pioli, you'll never play here at Washingtonville. And it was, but it was, it was the wake up call. This is pretty nice these days. Well, <laughs> now I can trip here. I got your back, coach. You think I'd let you fall? 
In the 1981 season opener, junior Scott Pioli and underdog Washingtonville snapped the 31-game home winning streak of rival Port Jervis. The win sparked momentum, and it carried off the field. Keep in mind, football started here in 1969. So we had a very short history. And as we continued to succeed on a weekly basis, it was really amazing to see the enthusiasm of the student body, parents, and people within the community. That was one of the cool things. There were people that were related to the football program in 1981, then were people who were completely, totally unrelated, but it affected them and impacted them and allowed them to be a part of something. A dear friend of mine, Kathy Kiernan, who was a cheerleader, her mom was sick and dying. When it came time, Kathy's mom wasn't able to help her shop for a prom dress. So Mrs. Galavan, the cheerleading coach, takes her for a prom dress. Then they go visit her mom in the hospital. <clears throat> I mean, parent passing away is pretty heavy stuff. Kathy, as adults we've talked about, it, and she said all of her happiness that year was happening through football. That season and what went on saved her life. It opened my eyes to that we actually did something good for the community and didn't even know it. Championships have that effect, especially first championships. So when Washingtonville won theirs by completing a perfect 10-0 season, the thing Scott was drawing in his notes was inspiration. Coach Green said this, I remember writing it down in a meeting. Happy, Happy are, are those who dream great dreams, dreams and, and are willing, willing to pay, pay the, the price to make, make them come true. true. That's Drix. That's five extra hills because five of them weren't good enough. At Washingtonville, the rules were the same at the Browns and the same rules with the Jets, with Johnson Parcells. Alabama, both of them can catch good. Be on time, pay attention, work hard. You do those three things, you'll have a chance. And part of that is the whole idea of dream the dreams, but then comes a work, man. Scott Pioli's work has taken him to two college football programs and the front offices of six NFL teams, all after he became one of just two 81 Wizards to play college football. Scott did that at Central Connecticut, just like Coach Green had. I think it was the only place you were willing to recommend me to. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Pioli calls it a blessed football life which got rerouted for the better that preseason junior year when his wizard teammates and coaches made Scott grow up. You know, you gave me a pretty bad flashback right there. What? I was the guy in school who always got that, excuse me, Mr. Pilly, is it something you'd like to add to the class? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I did that a couple <laughs> that, times that was, myself. That was what I, I remember that team meeting changing me as a player and a person because of how much that moment impacted me. It was the first time that I had been called out like that. It was embarrassing, it was humbling, and then there was that absolute fear that I was never gonna play. But again, had Coach Green done it in private, you know, I might have walked to that meeting. But there was, there was, it, there was truth serum in those meetings now, and, and you walked in and you got a cup. You know, John, we were talking about Scott Pioli. Vice President of Player Personnel, and he and Belichick, I mean, they were the architects of what took place last year. One of the brilliant things that Scott did, along with Belichick, remember in 2000, they kept four quarterbacks. If they had put Brady on the waiver wire, he probably would have been claimed and would never, of course, have done what he did last year. Touchdown, David Pop! Great free agent pickups, the essence of the word team, and the result of Super Bowl championship, and there is Scott. One of the things I appreciate, by the way, is you picking up the phone and calling me. But the year you picked up the phone and called me and said, Coach, how would you like to go to the Super Bowl? And not only me, but the other coaches, 
our wives. That was very generous of you, thinking of us. You had to be there. You had to be there. Coach Ruck had to be there. Coach Jarris had to be there. And, and, and your wives had to be there because they put up with all of you and us. But then having teammates there too, you know, Matt Spencer, Paul McHugh, the worm. Without all of that, I'm not even there. Without this place, without you, none of it happens. It's amazing how life turns out. I don't know if I ever told you this, but I broke down and cried at our Patriots, first Patriots parade. Thinking about our little parade. Mm -hmm. Just how good it made people feel by playing this silly game and winning. It's this selfish pursuit that impacts this additional greater good that you have no idea that it impacts. I can't ever remember a parade in Washington it was uh, probably one of the greatest moments in my life. And I was very proud to be with a great group of young men. And we were able to accomplish an undefeated season that I told you you would remember the rest of your life. You said that before the game. Again, all those the Super Bowls and all that stuff, and this is this is where the best one happened. Special moment. I love you. I I I, I love you too, buddy. The top one is, and I've taken that picture with me everywhere I've gone, is a picture of Coach Green on the field after the conference championship. And in true Scott, your contributions Coach Green to the fashion, of our program, he underlines the word our will always be remembered and greatly appreciated. Emphasizing this collective thing. Your friend. You're looking at that picture, but you're seeing Mrs. Galloway, Kathy, Danny Rodstrom, Matt, Paul, Richie Mack, The Worm, Sugar Bear, Troy Jemison, Bruce Carlson, Mr. Dinesco, President of the Living, Coach Green, Dan Smith, Coach Steve, Joe Doyle, Coach Ruck, Jim Devlin, Jody Hamlin with the scoop and score, Peter Verone's interception, Don Griffin, Steve Gallegos, Mr. Gorman, the next door neighbor who bought three extra bottles of, of, of drinks. You're seeing all the people that were part of that life. That's what I've cared about in all this whether it was Washingtonville or Super Bowl 36, it's being a part of something with other people that you love and care about. And November 14th, every year, I start thinking, okay, who am I gonna call? Who am I gonna text? And I just make a point to count my blessings. And as I communicate with those people and you hear something back, it's a reminder that I will never forget what I came from, who I came from, or where I came from. <laughs>